Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today we're going to start working on a tab bound booklet using chapter 3 dies, kind of like the one I made during Christmas in July, but this one's going to be a spooky Halloween themed one. And today we're going to work on inking some pages for creating the booklet, putting together the booklet, and working on some bits and bobs for decorating the pages. Let's get crafting! So I don't know if you can tell, I've got my splat box up um, because I want to get my grunge on and get a little bit messy. As you can see, I've already been um, playing around a little bit today with my distress inks, my distress oxide inks, pulled out my mica spray stains. So I had a bit of an explosion with one of them and ended up getting way too much mica stain on my mat and was using it. So I ended up pulling out some black gesso because the mica will kind of rise to the top. Like you, it's really hard to cover over the sparkle of the mica. And, and so it was a little bit more sparkle than I was going for. Um, because as I said in the intro, I wanna create another one of those tab bound booklets uh, using my chapter three dies like I did at Christmas. Um, so I was working on creating the papers that are gonna serve as what I die cut the shapes out of. Um, the Christmas one I used principles, but for this one I want to go all kind of grungy because it's gonna be a Halloween themed piece. So I've pulled out, I've got some uh, Canson XL watercolor paper and I just cut the sheets in half so they're nine by six so that they're a little easier to work with. I've grabbed out, I've got Lost Shadow, Hickory Smoke, and Villainous Potion in spray stains. I've also got my Villainous Potion Distress Ink pad. I've got Hickory Smoke in Distress Oxide and in the spray, um, which I may or may not use. I've also got Villainous Potion in the Oxide. And you may be wondering why I'm pulling out all of the inks as well as the sprays because you get a little bit of a different effect using the different types of medium. So we're just gonna have a play. Now, this is one of those things, when you play around with distress inks, as, as Tim Holtz says all the time, you get what you get and you don't pitch fit. So keep that in mind, results will vary. Not may vary, will vary. Um, every time I do it, I get a different result, all right? I was using, same, same same colors, same materials, two very different looks on these. I mean, they're similar, but the results are definitely different. So keep that in mind. I am going to start by putting some Villainous Potion Spray. And I'm spraying from a little bit of a distance to get like a little bit of splatter. So I've got my uh, distress, distress Sprayer. So I'm gonna add water so we get some movement going on. I'm gonna toss in a little Lost Shadow. And spritz a little hickory smoke. And spritz a little bit more. And I'm gonna pull out my heat gun and heat things up. It'll flatten it out and I can see where we're at and decide what's next. All right, now I'm gonna pull out the inks and smush them on my mat. And I'm gonna start with, I think the regular Villainous Potion.
And you can spray it with water, pick it up and tilt it to get the inks to move. When you pull out distress inks, you really should just be in the mood to play. And I'm just gonna spray my mat. Um, this is why I like having the silicone mat because I can just play with a variety of medium on it. Now I'm actually gonna pull in another sheet and kind of smear it through all this for cleanup. Villainous Potion Oxide. I think I'm going to toss some regular Villainous Potion on here. Um, and I'm just going to do it next to, because I don't really want to... So generally, when you're playing around with your distress, regular distress ink pads, you're not going to contaminate the ink pad. I'm not entirely sure that's true if you tap your distress to your oxide because the oxide has got pigment ink in it as opposed to the dye ink so I don't really want to get them mixed together in on on my ink pad okay, let's tap some of that and tap some of that and I'm going to take this one that we kind of smeared through and got some color on and do some tapping with that. And I'm gonna do a little spritzing of water. Definitely think it needs a little lost shadow in its life. And before that dries completely, I'm gonna grab some of the Hickory Smoke Distress Spray. And then add a little water. And this definitely needs some darker bits. So, fill in a potion spray and heat tool. Something else you can do, like some of these spots that are still very wet, is you can come in with a paper towel or a rag. If you saw my video with um, where I was doing die cuts out of different materials, I was hoping to get some good inky paper towels to use, but. I forgot that when you clean up villainous like purples, it comes out kind of pinky on here. So I don't know if I'll be using that, but all right, I'm looking at this, trying to decide what it might need more of. I feel 
like it needs a little more just straight up villainous potion because you'll notice the villainous potion's a little bit darker of a color than the uh, oxide version I think this one's good um, but I think this needs some more and it needs more in the dark so I'm gonna try a little spraying from up here a little bit of water Now I'm also gonna, please excuse dog barking. I'm also gonna ink the opposite side because when I die cut out like the envelope, you'll see some of the inside of the envelope and um, the file folder and all that stuff. So I definitely want my pages to be double-sided. So I'm gonna get it all inked up. And probably after I die cut stuff out, I'm gonna add more to the pieces. I'm gonna add a little bit of mica stain and probably some black splatters, but I figured I might as well wait until I die cut them out and do that then. All right, um, I think I've got my backs covered well enough. I am gonna probably do one more sheet and then die cut everything out and then I'll come back and uh, we will start assembling the booklet. So I've gone ahead and stitched the file folders closed to create pockets and gotten my tabs ready for assembly. Now, for the one I did for Christmas in July, I had linen tape that worked with the project and I don't have any of that for this one so I'm using strips of just cotton fabric that I used distress inks on because they were a little too bright um, for what I was going for. So I'm going to show you a couple pages for doing the tab binding. Um, if you want to see a full video doing it I will link the Christmas in July video below where I believe I do the entire um, booklet on camera. So step one is you take your first page that you want to bind um, and I need to figure out spacing. So I'm gonna grab because the envelopes are the shorter piece of this I need to make sure wherever I put my tabs on the file folder will actually line up with the um, envelope. So I'm gonna put one there and one there. So we're just gonna pull this away for a sec. And I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac um, to glue my tabs on. And so for the first one, 
and put a little glue on each tab. And then lay this piece down, kind of centering it like so. So that's the first one. Now, you can do, um, so for the first one I'm doing two tabs and then for the next one I'll do one. You could do three and then you do two for the next one, but because of the envelope being so small, the only way to actually really do this is to do a two and one tab binding. So step one is your first piece gets two tabs. Second piece, which let's line ourselves up, gets one tab. So I'm going to add a little glue to the tab. And place it on. And then flip it over. And then the two tabs fold over onto your second page, like so. And I am getting glue on my mat. So I'm going to add a little glue to the tabs. So they get folded over like that. Like that. Now the next page, we're going to want to line up our tabs again. So this tab is going to go here and this one's going to go down here. And we're gonna glue those on. Then that folds over and our green tab gets glued to the back of this one. Oof, I've got glues and all over the place over here. It's definitely a little bit easier with a uh, linen tape. So the next piece comes over and we add green. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish attaching everything um, and I'll be back. Okay, so I finished attaching all of the pieces. The tab binding and I did go around and ink all of the edges uh, with black soot distress ink and I would highly recommend doing that before you put the thing together, which I didn't think of it until after I put it together. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so I am going to start decorating and probably going to do pages in random order because what I am planning on doing first in the decorating is on some of the pages, I want to use some, um, texture paste with stencils and things like that. So I want to get that stuff done first so that it's all done and can be set aside to dry and that sort of thing. Um, and what I'm going to start with is on this page, and I'm going to get something to get it flat. Let me find something to pop that up with. There we go. And I'm just using the uh, CD cases that I put my uh, stamps in. I can talk, really I can. Um, and for this one, what I'm going to do is I've got a emboss it pen in black. Uh, this was actually a gift from a friend and so I haven't even used it yet. So we're going to see how this goes. I'm going to write out a line from Macbeth on this back page and emboss it with clear embossing powder. 
um, using the black embossing pen. And I really think what I'm gonna do before I do that is write it out so I have it in front of me, because I haven't done that, so that this does not go horribly wrong. All right, so the quote is from The Witches in Macbeth, and it's the double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, because I plan on putting a bubbling cauldron on this page. So we're gonna just try this out. And I don't know how long this is going to stay wet here in Florida, so we're going to go ahead and add the embossing powder as we go. Let's hope this hasn't completely dried on me. Nope, we're still good. Now I'm going to hit it with my heat gun to melt the embossing powder. Well that worked out pretty good and because it's embossed there's a little bit of shine to it. Um, and so I've, I've got, this is a um, Lawn Fawn die, so that is going to be our cauldron and we're gonna add some bubbling brew coming out of our cauldron. And I'm also gonna use for that, I've got these little plastic circles that I have a, like one of those like little mini binders that I use for some storage. And the these came out of the plastic sleeves that go in that binder. So we're gonna color those with alcohol ink markers to have some of those as the bubbles. And then I think what I'm going to use is some Liquitex glass beads and I'm going to use some Distress Ink Twisted Citron re to tint it. Um, but I do want to do something with the cauldron to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to put that sucker down, grab. So I picked up the Distress Texture Paste in black opaque that came out this year um, and I also have some grit paste crypt so we're going to use that to add some interest to our cauldron I think first round we're just gonna put a coat of the black on just to give it a little bit of texture make it look a little bit more cauldrony so I'm just giving it a coat of the texture paste now I cut this out of black cardstock so I could probably get away with using a translucent texture paste to just add the texture um, since the black would then show through but this is going to need time to dry. And you'll notice I'm putting it on rather, woo, I'm doing a rather rough coat on here because I want it textury and not like a pretty smooth cauldron. I want it to be, you know, textury gross witches cauldron kind of cauldron. So we're going to set that aside to dry. And actually, while I have the grit paste, the texture paste out, I want to use this stencil on one of the pages. And this is the Tim Holtz Stampers and All in this Halloween set. And it comes with stencils and stamps, and it does not have any kind of number on it. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, THMM165. So we're gonna use the bats on one of the pages. And so let's flip through. 
this page. I want to have some bats sticking off coming over here. So I'm going to stick a piece of just scrap paper in here to protect the page behind. I'm going to set down my stencil so that I can get some bats on there. And I'm going to use our opaque black texture paste. And I'm just going to spread it around. Try not to make a mess. So I got it in a few spots that I don't really want it. So I'm just going to take another little plastic palette knife and scrape off the bits I don't want. All right, so now this has to sit and dry. So I'm just gonna leave both these to sit and dry and I'll be back once everything is dry. So our cauldron's all dry and it's got lovely texture on it now. And I'm just gonna take some Distress Grip Paste Crypt to add a little bit more interest to it. And I'm just gonna use my finger, get a little bit of the grit paste and just add it on in a few spots. And we're going to set that aside to dry it's just to add a little bit more interest to our cauldron make it look a little grungier and the grit paste is a translucent paste so the thicker spots will keep the color the thinner spots will end up being black and what we can always do is come in and add a little paint if we feel we need to to just add more interest to our cauldron. So that's gonna get set aside to dry. Now our bats are all dry and I did go ahead and do a section over here using a spiderweb stencil. Um, and I did some stenciling and I went in and did a little bit of stamping as well. So I stamped, that is using the new Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Shattered stamp and I really I really love the look that gave um and I also used the spider web from um life of the party so it's got the little skeleton with the bow ties which I think is kind of funny so I did that on a few of the pages just to add a little bit of interest um, and some more texture to the background. Another thing I did off camera is I have a couple of the Tim Holtz uh, paper dolls from the Halloween set and I did a coat, I don't know if you can see, it's a little streaky in there, um, of clear gesso on them so that I can add some color to them and the clear gesso will give it tooth because the paper dolls are glossy. Let me see if I've got one here. See, they're kind of, there's a little bit of shine to them. 
And now you can see that that, hopefully you can see on screen that this is matte. So it will take like colored pencils. I've seen a lot of makers use the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils, which I don't actually have um, to color. And oh, I missed a spot on him. Um, so this way I can give a little bit of color to my paper dolls. Um, so I'm gonna grab, all right, so I was just testing it out. And what I'm doing is basically watercoloring with uh, Distress Ink. So I've got some wilted violet and a clear acrylic block where I smush some wilted violet and a little bit of water and I've grabbed a paintbrush. And I'm just going in and adding a hint of purple to her dress. And I may grab some Villainous Potion and add some of that to this as well. So it just adds a little subtle hint of color to her. And I'm gonna set her aside and let her dry. And I think for this little girl, we're gonna see what happens if we do a little twisted citrum. I think she might be a little too dark. I don't know that it's doing all that much. A little bit. It's making it a little, I don't know if you can tell on screen that there's a slight difference between the colored parts and the not colored parts. I think we're going to give his tie, make his tie a little neon -y green. So yeah, the, the color definitely shows up on whiter spots better than um, on the darker spots, but it does give a little bit of subtle coloring to it. Um, and I actually think I'm just going to leave him with just the bow tie done. I'm trying to decide, do I want to add purple to his outfit, like to his suit? Because, yeah, you can you can kind of see it a little bit. That she's got a little bit of tinge to her and isn't plain. Um, I also die cut a bunch of stuff out of black cardstock. Um, but I want to add a little bit more interest to it. So what we're going to do is I've got black stickles. It's black diamond. And so what we're going to do is kind of just paint some. We're going to kind of paint it on the pieces um, to give them a little bit more interest. So I'm just going to trying to decide if the paintbrush is going to work better or if it's my or my finger is going to work better. I think my finger is going to be easier to do, um, even though it's likely to make a bit of a mess. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know I don't mind getting my fingers messy. So it's just going to add a little bit, I don't know if you can see, shimmer to the pieces. Um, so I'm just going to go around, just add a little on, and then use my finger to smooth it out. So I'm going to do this to all of the pieces I die cut just to add a little bit more interest to them. Um, now I'm not planning on using the whole um, dragonfly so I don't know that I'm going to do any of this on the body. Um, Though I might. I was thinking I was going to use the wings um, behind something. So I'm going to do that and I will be back. 
Um, now, one thing I did figure out as I was doing these that instead of spreading it out, pouncing with my finger works a lot better. So if you're using stickles um, and we're having and are having an issue with spreading it out with your finger, pouncing your finger down, up and down works a lot better than trying to smooth it out with your finger. So we're going to stop there and I'm giving you a sneak peek of what the front of the booklet's going to look like. Next time we'll work on decorating some of the pages. So if you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.